Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Exchange 2010 really brought some great new features that are going to help us make our Exchange 2010 environment highly available. And when we're talking about being highly available, we're not just talking about being redundant, because being redundant is one thing. But highly available means that if your user is connected to their mailbox and you have some sort of failure, whether it be a hardware failure, server failure, whatever the failure type is, the user doesn't even know it. They don't even realize that there was an automatic failover process that happened and their client automatically connected to that new failed over resource. And being highly available in Exchange 2010 really starts with the database availability group. And this is new with Exchange 2010, and it's a much more distributed architecture than we had in the past where we had a clustered mailbox server, and basically we had shared storage, and that's where the mailbox database was, and then we would had multiple nodes connected to that one copy on the shared storage of the database mailbox. Well, with our database availability group, we actually have completely separate Exchange servers, so no shared storage, and we have mailbox database copies that can be on multiple nodes that are in our database availability group and we can have up to 16 members in a database availability group so we could actually have 16 copies of a mailbox database one on each member of the database availability group and if we had a failure of the active copy then one of our inactive copies that was constantly being replicated to will become active automatically and our client will automatically connect to that new active copy of the mailbox database. And the exchange servers in our database availability group can be in the same subnet, they can be in different subnets, or they can even be in different sites. So we can actually use our database availability group to replicate a mailbox database to another site, like a disaster recovery site, so that we're actually protected from a complete site failure. And in this training, we're not only going to go over how to create a database availability group, but we're going to go over how to create database copies, how to troubleshoot database copy creation, how to perform database switchovers if we want to do maintenance on an Exchange server, how to configure the failover process, how to block automatic failover, and also how to create lagged database copies so that we can use those copies to actually restore our mailbox database if we have a major problem with our database or even restore a mailbox from our lagged database copy. And we're also going to go over how to configure our database availability group networks and our replication networks. But database availability groups are really just one piece of the puzzle to making Exchange 2010 highly available. We also need to make our hub transport servers and our client access servers highly available as well. And we're going to go over how to do that. We're going to talk about load balancing our client access servers with a hardware F5 load balancer. And how to configure and set up a client access array. And also how to make our hub transport servers highly available. So if we have a failure of any one of those roles, it's not a problem. Our clients automatically connect to the failed over resource. Also for using edge transport servers, we're going to go over how to add an edge transport server and make them highly available both for email coming from the internet to our organization and also going from our organization out to the internet. So not only are we going to go over how to configure all of these different roles and make them highly available, we're actually going to see what it looks like from the client's perspective when we have a failure of any one of these roles. And finally, we're going to go over how we'd want to configure our database availability groups if we want them to span multiple sites, both in an active, passive site scenario where we have our users in one site and we have a disaster recovery or second site, as well as if we have an active active site scenario where we have users in both sites. So let's get started. 